Hello, my name is Eddie Tofbig. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of the Chicago Soybean Complex. Chicago Soybeans. Back in late February to early March, when the market reached the December 2020 low, prices turned back up, pushing through congestion in the 1161 area, then at 1161 to 1177. The 2021 low at 1181, the May 23 low at 1193, the December 2021 low at 1223, and most recently, the MOVE highlighted declining median moving average, currently 1199, before utilizing it as a base in mid-May for the most recent move higher. To add to the discussion, I said the following nine weeks ago, and I quote, the one thing such a move higher might start is discussion if the November 2023 to date action is a potential descent in scallop pattern. The only other thing to bear in mind is not here on this daily ch chart, but in Chicago soybean meal. And that was, is, the well highlighted annual key reversal down we saw there for 2023. Not directly related here, but not worth ignoring either, end of quote. On the point of a descent in scallop pattern, I said four weeks ago and I quote, if prices were to continue lower, down to the 1130 area, and then hesitate before breaking further down, well, that would fit in with the pattern. The alternative is an almost immediate return higher and quick break, end of quote. Well, much as I thought we might be heading lower, prices instead have taken a turn higher, enough that we are on the verge last week of creating not just one, but possibly two patterns. Firstly, we have a potential descend in scallop pattern with an upside move seemingly in operation, giving a primary target in the 1364 area. And the secondary, hard to reach target X1 up in the 1400 area. As part of this descend in scallop pattern construction, the market has created a possible double bottom over February to May. Thus, such a pattern will have a primary target X2 in the 1276 area, with a secondary hard to reach target X3 in the 1313 area. I am actually this week on the verge of suspending, even retiring these bullish patterns, purely because of the actions seen this week. But first, let me discuss two highlighted features on this market. They are the MOVE highlighted medium moving average and the GOLD highlighted long moving average, currently 1266. As I said last week, they have effectively bracketed the market and is worth paying special attention to those below and above. Secondly, I drew last week a bullish Andrews pitchfork for the late February to late April action. This was to help aid in ascertaining a new possible bullish angle of attack. However, this has not succeeded. So I have this week replaced the bullish Andrews with a shallower bullish shift pitchfork. <coughs> Which is, <coughs> excuse me, which is a much better fit, as you can see the May high aligning with the upper time. The upper time is currently at 12.65. And the market's at the moment straddling the middle time, currently at 12.12. It also has prompted a question, is the descending scalar pattern, pattern seeing the lower part morphing into a possible bull channel, identified by the upper and lower tines of the bullish shift pitchfork, currently 12.65 to 11.59 respectively? This brings me to my final point, and this is how the action throughout May is now on the verge of becoming a double top, Adam and Eve type. It is not a done deal, but we are close, and I would look to this idea should we see strong consecutive closes below in the very immediate future, below both the green highlighted short medium moving average, currently 12.02, and the MOVE highlighted medium moving average. 
We're not there yet, but a primary move lower would be about 28 cents. And the secondary harder to reach move would be about 52 cents once we have confirmed moves below $12 even. One additional point, and that is that sometimes double tops such as this one appear after a very large decline and can indicate the end of that decline or coming towards the end of that decline soon. So just be aware. It doesn't happen always, but it does happen enough times for it to be noticeable. Chicago soybean meal. The market consolidated in late February this year, down at 326.90. But this congestion was different compared to earlier ones. As we had crossing through it back then, the dark blue highlighted extension to the lower trend line, currently 325 and a half, of the July to September 2021 descending triangle. I said in 11 weeks ago, and I quote, this may be nothing, but I'm minded, after such a fall as we've seen since November last year, that this may, just may, see some hesitation around the 327 to 325 zone. I'm not certain on that, but it is worth considering, end of quote. Well, price has utilized this blue highlighted extension to the descending triangle as a base and rallied back up through the 61.8% absolute Fibonacci line at 3.36.30 and even briefly over the then short medium moving average currently at 3.30.60 before again succumbing to bearish pressure from this moving average. The market then created a very early February to early May sideways triangle highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. We advanced quite a way along the coil of this triangle until breaking on the upside in late April. Prices swiftly reached their primary target and soon after the harder to reach secondary target, secondary target as well. How once, however, once all the work was done on the way up from the sideways triangle, the market started to waver, notably being capped in early May by a combination of the gold highlighted declining long moving average, currently 377 and a half, and especially by the 50% Fibonacci line of the August 2020 to March 2022 move at 390 even. Prices backed off down to the nearest congestion area between 363.70 to 368.80, that zone, containing the October 2023 low at 366.40. We have stayed between this congestion and the gold long moving average overhead until the middle of last week, when the market tried a flyer on the upside. But this was again capped by the long moving average, as well as the August 2023 low at 382.70. The move lower this week has been even more significant as we are on the verge of making an immediate countering weekly key reversal down to offset last week's weekly key reversal up. If we close this week below 366.20, then we'll be on anything between 366.20 and 380.60 and we'll have a lesser outside week. Now there are two other new features I'd like to discuss. Firstly, I have drawn a purple highlighted late February, very early April, bullish Andrews pitchfork. I've done so to help show the bull channel roughly cover, covered by the top side upper tine, currently at 391.80, and the lower tine below, currently 363.60. However, this may be a little premature and not needed as we are currently testing the lower tine and it may give way. The reason for this possible failure that the market has formed a possible double top for the action over May, much like in soybeans, but we are a lot closer to breaking down. So if we did, then we would have a primary move lower of about $7, and the secondary harder to reach move would down would be about $12. They are not big moves, but the impact on the market at this time would be likely much higher than in just dollar terms, should it happen. It all depends now what the market does with that 363.70 to 368.80 zone, and by that I mean what it does conclusively in that area. I'd also note, as I said in soybeans, that sometimes double tops such as this one appear after a large decline and can indicate the end of that decline soon. So just be aware doesn't happen always, but it does happen enough times to be noticeable. Finally, I will raise once again the one key feature raised here as a possible item 48 weeks ago, and it since came to fruition at the close of 2023. 
it was that the whole of 2023 was an annual key reversal down in Chicago soybean meal last year. This potential hangs over all of this market more than anything right now. And all action should be seen in the shadow of this pattern. Chicago soybean oil. At the turn of the year, the market broke down through the 38.2% Fibonacci line at 48.95 that held up prices over November and December last year. At that time, it looked as if the market might form a very extensive bearish halfway hesitation, with potential being as low as below 40 even. However, the decline was a lot shallower than in previous moves lower. This was possibly dictated on top at the time by the green highlighted short medium moving average currently at 46.33. Prices went down to the area of congestion we last saw in May 2023 consisting of possibly three, four bands. They were, are, 44.68 to 45.04 made up of the 2014 high at 45.04 and the May 2023 low at 44.68. Then the tight 43.80 to 43.94 zone made up of the 50% absolute Fibonacci line at 43.80 and the April 2014 high at 43.94. Then the interesting 42.65 congestion with the nearby neckline highlighted in bright red of the October 2019 to February 2020 head and shoulders top. And that's currently at 43.68. I mention all of these because some 46 weeks ago and numerous times since I said the following about the big descending wedge pattern that was on my daily chart back then and is now high up off the top of my chart. I said the following and I quote, I would consider this descending wedge pattern may, just may, have lately morphed into a possible scallop pattern, end of quote. This is a big pattern idea and the market decline since autumn of last year fits in with this, with the expectations I voiced of eventually witnessing a fall down to the area of the May and June lows between 48 even to 46 even zone, which is where we've recently been. I've often stated here that I am keeping a very, very close eye on this idea, as any significant breakdown below the 48, 46 zone could signal the start of a rest of this move lower. I said 11 weeks ago, and I quote, so far I am just convinced of the move that we've seen this break lower already. No. I'm not convinced of that move, not just yet. However, three things to bear in mind. Firstly, this is a really big pattern stretching from November 2022 to date. So do not expect any immediate sharp movements. Secondly, data indicates about three out of four times the market breaks lower. Just be aware of that. Finally, I would like to float the idea of the recent unusual bear channel, end of quote. Now, I've highlighted the bear channel dating from the start of 2023 in dark blue on my daily chart, and that's currently 39.63 to 46 even. Had for a while utilized the green short medium moving average, currently 46.33, as the upper bear channel line before I drew a proper upper trend line. So it was with that in mind that mid March saw prices punching through the short medium moving average, then the blue highlighted upper bear channel line the 38.2% Fibonacci line of the March 2020 to April 2022 move at 48.95. And also back then the slowly declining medium moving average, currently 46.51. However, this was too much of a rise too soon and the additional forces mustered by the significant 38.2% Fibonacci line of the March 2020 to April 22 move. Plus the congestion era seen in December last year between 49 even to 51 and a quarter eroded the move higher, despite consecutive closes over both the medium moving average and the 38.2% Fibonacci line. Enough that, enough that seven weeks ago, we saw the market close lower below the 38.2% Fibonacci line, below the mauve colored medium moving average, back within the dark blue highlighted bear channel and back below the highlighted short medium moving average. Now, nine weeks ago, I laid out some potential targets topside for a break of this pattern and I quote, so a primary target X would be in the 49.65 area, an area that we've almost reached with a secondary hard to reach target X1 up in the 51.95 area, end of quote. 
Well, the market reached the primary target at 49.65 and reached it again and almost a third time. But then the market turned lower, dropping down to gather fresh ammunition at the construction of the 43.80 to 43.90 zone, as well as the bright red candlestick, uh, sorry, bright red highlighted neckline, currently 43.68 of the October 2019 to February 2020 head and shoulders top. And this is where we have seen a fresh rally start late three weeks ago. This move up has been enough to now tackle the dark blue upper bear channel line, as well as the combination nearby of the green short medium and mauve medium moving averages. But prices have not overcome these, not yet, but they continue trying. And that is why I've left target X1 still on this daily chart as a potential for this move higher. However, uh, I am not dismissive of the breaks above the blue highlighted bull channel, sorry, bear channel. So this week I've drawn a late November 2023 to mid-March bearish shift pitchfork highlighted in green on my daily chart that may act as a possible bearish channel or of some form, a bearish channel of some form. The market is at this time in between the upper twine above currently 48.07 and the middle time below currently 44.67. What I do realize now is this chart is being increasingly becoming increasingly messy and too colorful in too small an area. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and at the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.